So this is not a neighborhood electric vehicle. This is a vehicle that you as a consumer can drive every day, seats five people, goes 100 miles on completely zero emission battery power. The vehicle is a dedicated platform, dedicated design, so it's not going to be an extension of an Altima or a Cube or a Versa. It's a dedicated EV. Now from a design standpoint, we want to make sure that it's iconic. And what I mean by iconic is one that, re that people will recognize as something different and something unique and something futuristic, but not in a Blade Runner, George Jetson kind of way, but in a way that when people see it drive by, they'll say, what is that? And then the fact that it's an EV, of course it needs to be good looking. I mean, an ugly EV is not going to sell, right? So we need to make a, a well-designed, attractive vehicle, futuristic, but also signaling because we know that people want to signal to others that they're doing something different. You know, the early adopters especially are going to want to signal to their friends, their neighbors, other people that I'm driving an EV, I'm being zero emission, I'm doing something good for the planet. So the design has to help them communicate that. We don't have a capacity problem. We can sell hundreds, we can sell thousands, we can sell tens of thousands. It's an issue of market demand and infrastructure, making sure the infrastructure's in place, let the market demand be there, and we can supply. The battery technology that Nissan's developed is in-house technology. Our engineers have been working on it since 1992. So it's not something we're having to purchase from the outside, it's our engineers have developed a lithium ion battery that goes 100 miles of real world range. We're completely confident in its performance, its durability, its, its amount of time that it'll work. We're putting our name on it, it's our technology, we're ready to come to market. As a consumer, you don't want to worry about, okay, two years later, is there going to be a battery that goes longer and you're now stuck with generation two? We want to take that concern out of your hands and out of your worry. So from a leasing standpoint, we're going to say, we own the battery. You as a consumer then can change it and change it as new technology comes forward. Plus, we also want to, at the end of the term, at the end of the leasing term, we want to take the batteries back. Because we know that there are many utility companies that want to use these batteries in a secondary application. It's a bridge technology, so you're not zero emission. So you're basically carrying around two power plants, you're basically carrying around double the amount of weight for the, for the chance that, and the only reason you do a plug-in hybrid is because you're not confident in your battery. So a plug-in hybrid that gets 40 miles is good. I mean, for somebody who only needs 40 miles of zero emission range, okay, that's good, but you're not zero emission. A pure battery electric vehicle, you're zero emission all the time. And that's really how we get CO2 reduction and how we get off foreign oil. The vehicle can be ready, but without the infrastructure, the vehicle then is, is an orphan. At the same time, people have said, well, I can put infrastructure in, but I need to make sure cars are coming. So what the communication has been is, no, both of those pieces are now coming together. And, and what the announcements that we've made this week, we talked about Oregon, we've already made announcements in Tennessee, we've talked about Sonoma County, the mayors of San Francisco, San Jose, and Oakland have, have talked about making the Bay Area an EV capital. So everybody is seeing and everybody is now working towards supporting the introduction of EVs.